Oh look, sword fodder. I've got new zombie heads from Zombie Go Boom. Bought two of them. And these are the improved version, which is more realistic than the previous one. For one, from what I understand, the material they're using now for the bone is more realistic. The previous version was the one that I, I tested. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them down below. Um, the previous version was a bit on the brittle side. The bone analog didn't cut very well. And uh, this here seems pretty close. And speaking of close, you can see the bone material here. Hopefully it'll show up on camera. So you can see that it is a porous material. And if I take a knife and just scrape a little at that, you can hopefully see that I can actually cut into it a bit. Not very well. I mean, it is supposed to be hard, of course, but not too hard that you can cut it. So I think this is pretty good. This foam here, I'm not a big fan of. I mean, I understand why they pick a material like this. It's much more economical to fill it up because, well, foam, of course, isn't that dense. So you don't have to use quite as much material to fill it all out. Um, if you were to use some kind of rubber, urethane rubber like the, the skin here or silicone rubber, which I personally would prefer, this would get really expensive. Silicone rubber especially is extremely pricey and it also would get fairly heavy, I think. So I understand why they picked it. It's just not particularly realistic material. I mean, I can, you know, just push in like this and it's kind of fluffy. Just doesn't really behave the way that actual flesh does. Flesh would, of course, have a certain amount of moisture and it would be denser. But again, I totally understand why they chose that. The nice thing about the rubber is that it holds everything together as opposed to, well, before when they smashed the skull, the pieces would just fly all over the place and it would just kind of disintegrate. Whereas this here, being rubber, keeps everything more together so it acts more like skin. On this one, the eye is torn and you can probably look inside, well, maybe not. A little bit. And the nice thing here is there is actual bone in the back. There's this misconception that you could kill somebody by just jamming your fingers into their eyes and then threw them into the brain, which is nonsense. There is, the skull actually has bone in the back there, which you couldn't push through with just your fingers, unless you're a superhero or something. So this is as far as I can go. So these seem appropriately anatomically correct and I'm looking forward to testing them. I can't exactly tell you when that's going to be because I'm, I'm still looking for a more suitable spot for blade tests locally and I'll have to put together a good setup. So can't quite say yet. One of the things that I'm planning is helmet tests because these are perfect for that. I wanna set them up ideally on something that has a bit of give, that can rock back and forth a little, and then put the helmet on and use various weapons on it to see not only what happens to the helmet, but also to the skull. And I would ideally, I would like to test helmets in different thicknesses because there's a bit of a debate going on as to what thickness is appropriate for a, a reproduction helmet. The problem is modern helmets are made from sheet metal. They are of uniform thickness and historical helmets weren't. They had different different areas were of different thickness. For example, uh, the front might be thicker than the sides or what have you. So that's both a result of the, the, the making process as well as also considerations of where do you need more protection. So it's a bit difficult to figure out what would be a good appropriate reproduction, but I can simply try several ones, like an, an 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge maybe, and then compare and see what happens. 
So I, on Cult of Athena, I found an Arms and Armor Knightly Riding Sword, which I ordered because it seemed perfect. It was in the scratch and dent section, so it has some cosmetic blemishes, which are really not relevant for this. As you may imagine, I'm not terribly keen on risking to break one of my expensive swords, but at the same time, I also don't want to grab just a random cheap junk sword that may give you a wrong impression. Um, it's of course always a bit of a um, a bit of an imbalance because the helmet is most likely going to be on the cheaper end because I don't exactly want to commission an $800 helmet from one of the higher end armorers. And speaking of which, if any of you have a helmet lying around that you don't use, where you think, hey, this would be cool if this was tested, uh, let me know. If you're willing to send that to me, I'll cover the shipping. So they should ideally be as historically accurate as possible, but at the same time, I understand that high quality, very authentic armor tends to be very expensive. So whatever you have, let me know if, if you're not using it anyway and wanna see it put to good use, if you wanna call that good use, it's up to you. It could be anything really, it could be, a Viking helmet, Roman, medieval. I would definitely like to test at least one helmet with a visor. And as said, different thicknesses, 18 gauge, 16, 14, what have you. So that would be awesome. And I've also got this thing here that Chuck sent me as a bonus to the heads. This is supposed to be a leg target. So it's the same kind of construction. It's got the foam here and then the, the urethane rubber. So this is this one is not terribly realistic by any means. For one, it's very light. I mean, a leg of this size, if that was a thigh, that would be very heavy. This thing here is, is really quite light due to the foam. And um, I don't know really how, how good tests are going to be on this. What I'm thinking is this may be good for armor tests, like if I put mail on there, for example, or a piece of gambeson or, or something like that and then see if it penetrates the armor. Cutting this foam here is really nothing like cutting flesh, doesn't feel like it at all. Before you ask how do I know what cutting flesh feels like, well for one we've all cut our, ourselves at one point or another, but uh, I also have experimented with silicone rubber and that's the stuff that they use for uh, surgical trainers, uh, for surgeons to practice sutures and uh, that stuff gets very um, authentic, so to speak. That uh, has kind of a, a more moist feel than uh, urethane rubber and, and other materials, and I've, I've done some tests on that. And yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably convinced that that's quite realistic. But as I said, it is prohibitively expensive. So there is that problem. And finally, I also want to mention that I've revived my other channel. It was originally intended as a gaming channel, but now I just want to use it as a whatever channel. I mean, yes, this is one too, technically. This on, on the main channel, I also do whatever the heck I feel like at the time, and it can include gaming, it can include rambles, like this um, and various other things. But occasionally I have ideas for a video that I then decide against putting up on the main channel because I feel like it's not quote unquote professional enough. Like I have a certain standard of quality for the main channel, which um, has increased over the years. And on the, the other channels, and since it's smaller and more selective, if you will, I can be more comfortable putting various things on there. They're also closer to what I used to do on my channel before it got so big. You know, with the size comes a certain uh, feeling of responsibility, if you will. Like, I don't want to just put up things that I don't feel are as high production value as they could be. Even though this video is kind of, kind of disproves that, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyway, so it's there. I will occasionally upload and I will upload um, videos of a totally accurate battle simulator there. So it's going to be kind of a series. So if you want to see that, go to the, the video description, you'll find a link and, and you can get over there. And that's that. So that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, um, 
merchandise. Sometimes people ask, where can I get this sweatshirt and whatnot. There is a link down below in the video description. It's in, in fact, always there right at the bottom. So you can click on there and go there if you like. So yeah, I think that really is all I had. So thanks for watching. And you, my friend, can look forward to a bit of stabby stabby time when I get around to you. Actually, I'm not gonna stab you with a knife. I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch you with plastic knuckles. And yes, I'm talking to a fake zombie head. And I'm going to cut you with a sword. And I'm going to stab you with various things. And I might even, I might even smash you with a poleaxe. So, yeah, you've got something coming right there, buddy. Shut up.